and please Karen Griffith from the Hinkler Trail region. And um, yeah, let us, you know what we're looking for. It's up okay. to you. Tell us how it is for you. On the, on the okay, end. so just a little bit of background. Um, I'm 33 years old. I'm a single mum of five beautiful daughters. Mm -hmm. um, I was first put on the card in March 2019. At the time, I was with my girl's dad still, um, and I needed a top-up uh, parenting payment partnered as his sole trading business. Um, he had a Jim's Mine franchise, and when we had that big dry, it, we just we needed the extra help. There was no way we were going to survive without it. Um, him and I separated in June last year, um, and I'm still on the card, obviously. So I've had a lot of problems with it. Um, I've been very vocal about my problems with it um, because I hear all my friends' stories as well, and they're too scared to speak out. Um, mm. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them at all. Because, you know, when, when it comes down to, you know, keeping a roof over your kids' heads and feeding, feeding, like, it's priorities. You know, you do what you've got to do, what you think you have to do to keep your, your kids and your family safe. Yeah. Um, so I sort of went, no, nah, I've had enough. I'm going to talk about it. Um, so, oh, I'm sorry, I'm so tired. Yeah, you're a new mum. You're looking very well for a new mum. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know. but, um, yeah, so there's a couple of main things, um, like bigger things that I mm -hmm. think are important to talk about. Um, I'm going to leave my kids till last because I will probably cry. <laughs> so will we. But, so these times, I've done a couple of interviews for newspapers and I did a um, the. 7.30 report. You did, yeah. Um, every time I speak about this, I get insanely nervous. Um, not so much about the speaking, but about the blowback from speaking. Yeah. What kind of abuse am I going to cop on social media this time? What kind of horrible comments am I going to get from people assuming that all of my kids have different fathers, that I've never worked a day in my life, that I just breed to get more money? Like, some of the things that people have said to me when I've had the courage to speak out are absolutely disgusting. Like, and and it, it's made me lose a lot of my hope in humanity. Like, what is wrong with people that they feel the need and they feel like they have the right to abuse people in this way all because I'm standing up for something that I believe is wrong. And I'm not just doing it for me. I'm doing it for all the people that are too afraid to. I'm doing it for my kids. Now, I live in a dead-end town. The only reason I'm here is because all of my family is here. My support system is here. You know, and I, I think about it, and sometimes I regret coming back here because when my kids leave high school, there's nothing here for them. There's nothing. And I don't see that about to change because it's been that way ever since I was a teenager. But the bullying, you know, it got to a point where I, I just stopped... Um, saying anything about it for a while because I couldn't take it anymore. I, cu I couldn't take the abuse. I couldn't take the nastiness. Um, so I walked away for a little bit. And I've only really probably recently come back <laughs> and I've just jumped right in and put myself out there again. <laughs> but anyway, so th there's that. That's just, yeah. So I... Had, I will also say that the injury card did contribute to the breakdown of my relationship with my girl's dad because the financial stress that we were under from um, not only his his income being drastically reduced because, you know, you can't mow grass that hasn't grown, exactly. um, then all the issues I had with the card, which, by the way, I got no letter informing, that I was, informing me that I was going to get it. It just showed up in the mail one day. Wow. Merry Christmas. Um, you know, all the, the financial stress from that. And then, you know, uh, especially in the beginning, it was really hard to figure out what it would and would not pay because before Inju, everything, everything was direct debited. Sorry, rent was centre paid, electricity centre paid, daycare was centre paid, um, my phone bill and internet bill were centre paid. 
all my other bills were direct debited. I'd wake up on a morning on payday, all of my bills were already paid, what was in my account was my money to spend on food and whatever else was left, fuel and whatnot. Since in June, I never know what time anything's going to come out. Um, I found out the hard way that it wouldn't actually allow me to use my Inju card to pay for some of my bills. I had to use my cash portion, which then meant I didn't have a cash portion. Cash portion. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's been a nightmare from day dot, really. Um, I'll talk more about the uh, decline transactions when I talk about my exit process. Mm -hmm. um, but probably, yeah, okay. The hardest thing for me is um, how the card has affected my kids. You know, it's hard enough when you're a single parent, you're constantly judging yourself and you're constantly like, I could have done this different. I could have done that better, you know, and then to go to a community festival because your daughter was performing there, the note comes home from school, says that it's a free free event. Awesome. We can go to these schools. We show up. I didn't even make it to the gate um, because they've got this big sign out near the gate that says uh, $2 adult entry, dollar kids entry, unless the, the kid's performing. So, well, that would have been all well and good. Um, if it was just one of my daughters, but I had all of my daughters except for my oldest. So I've stopped 10, 15 metres away from the gate and I'm just like, what the hell am I going to do? Mm. I've called up my girlfriend and I'm just like, um, Jade, you know you have to pay to get into this, right? And she's like, what? The note said it was free. I'm like, yeah, no. So I'm standing here. I had 80, 80 or $85 on my Inju card. Um. <laughs> can't get cash. At that stage, I was using my cash portion to pay my bills. What am I going to do? So I've stood there and I'm like stressing hard. I'm like, Amber needs to perform. We're all here to see her perform. I'm, I don't want to let her down. I have to figure out how I'm going to get into this festival. So it took a lot for me to swallow my pride, walk up to the gate, and explain to the lady there why I couldn't pay to get in. I've never felt more humiliated in my life. <laughs> like, who the hell can't afford, you know, ten or so dollars cash to get to get into an event? Apparently me. Um, luckily, the lady she was really lovely. Um, she understood completely, and she said, "Look, honey, just go in." So that was the first hurdle. So. We got there, um, I'm notoriously early for everything. I hate being late. So we were there half an hour early. I really wish we weren't <laughs> because we went and sat down and we were listening to some people perform and I was sort of looking around me and there's jumping castles, dodging cars, uh, rock rock climbing walls, you name it. It was under camel rides, you name it, it was there. And everything was cash only. So I'm sitting there waiting for my daughter's time to perform. And I've got three little girls saying, mommy, can we do this? Can we do that? And I'm like, I'm sorry, honey, I don't have the cash. But you've got money, mommy. Yeah, I know I've got money, honey, but it's on a fucking Inju card. So they're hounding me and they're not understanding why they're being excluded through no fault of their own. They are being excluded from a community event. So I've actually, I've picked them up and I've found, gone over to the side wall where there was like nobody and I'm bawling my eyes out. Like I've never felt like more of a failure as a parent than what I felt that day with these three little girls not understanding why they can't join in the fun that everybody else is joining in on. And you know, like, and if it wasn't for my best friend's mum, Janine, I love you, Janine. <laughs> coming up to me and flipping me a 20 on the sly, we wouldn't have even been able to get anything to eat, you know. But they, my daughter performed and we left straight away. You know, it could have been a really fun day. I had $85. I'd paid all my bills. I'd got 
food, fuel. I had nothing else I needed to spend it on. We could have had a great day down there. They had fireworks later that night. They could have gone on a camel ride, you know, gorged themselves on lollies, whatever the hell. It would have been an awesome day. But because I was put on this bloody cashless card through no fault of my own, we missed out. So as soon as she was done performing, we hightailed it out of there and I cried all the way home. It's not fair that, you know, my kids are being punished because I'm a single parent. It's just, oh. Would you like to tell us about your exit process, Karen? Yeah, that's a joke. Um, okay, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I applied. Um, I actually waited to apply for the exit because I wanted to see if people would actually get off it. Um, I think I waited two or three months before I'm like, nah, I'm, I want off this. I have, I have to try. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll just touch on something else quickly. The wraparound services, yeah. non-existent. Any support that I have received, I have gone out and I have found by myself. Um, so when I talk about my financial counsellor, I went out and found him. He wasn't offered to me. He, it, there was no, these are the organisations that can help you. I did the research. I went out and I got the help that I needed to get. So I put my application in. With my application, I wrote up two pages of um, in the little comment section on the back of all the ways the card has negatively impacted me and my family, mm -hmm. um, right down to me needing to go back on antidepressants for the first time since I was a teenager. Um, oh, no, sorry. Uh, very early 20s, I did go back on them for a little bit. Um, I had a letter from my financial counsellor. I had a letter from my counsellor at Eden Place, um, who uh, specialise in domestic violence. Um, just about every organisation I was linked in, and there was quite a few. I had letters from them supporting my um, application to get off the card. Uh, right, so that's all. Yeah, that's, uh, I had to give them uh, attendance records for my kids, um, for school, bank statements, basically everything except for a blood sample. Um, but I gave it all to them. I gave them all the information they wanted. I gave them more than what they wanted. Um, nine months later, I get my first phone call. Um, no, sorry. Did I get one or two? Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, I get, I get the phone call from uh, Inju. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, I'm here to give you your telephone interview. Awesome. Sweet. Now, when my ex and I first split up, um, I had a couple of bills that were in my name that were his. Um, and then I had a couple of other bills that... I would normally had direct debit in, but taking the advice of my financial counsellor, because I was left with a financial shitstorm, really. Um, I was, there was $900 behind in rent because he wasn't able to pay his portion of the rent. Mine was all, always automatically taken out. Mm -hmm. um, we were behind in the phone bill. Like there's that many bills that we got behind in, um, because we just weren't, we couldn't survive on my Centrelink income alone. Um, so I'm just like, nah, I need, to, I can't keep trying to, you know, uh, chop and change which bills get paid, which fortnight. I need to get this sorted. So I went and I saw my financial counsellor, and he was able to help me negotiate um, a payment freeze for a couple of the bills um, and lower repayments for the rest. Yeah. So with uh, zip money, never ever get zip money. Zip pays all right, there's no interest. Zip money is evil. Um, so I had a three month um, stay on my repayments with them. But when they started to try to take the money out again, they were trying to take it out on my off pay week. So I didn't get any correspondence from Zip saying that they were trying to take out this money. Nothing, and because it was from my injury card, nothing shows up on your bank statement, on your injury statement. Yeah. So I was none the wiser. You call it a statement, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I was none the wiser. I had no idea that they were even trying to take money out of my account. Um, right. There was something, I got, it got to the point where I'm like, I should have been starting to repay these, this bill by now. Why haven't they started taking money out? So I called them. They're in. And they're like, oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, no, sorry, that's right. That's what happened. Um, 
one day there, uh, in about five transactions, they took about $280 out of my account. And oh. I lost it. I'm just like, that's my food money. Like I'd paid everything else. All I had left to do was go food shopping and they'd taken the lot. So I called them up and I'm just like, what the hell is going on? Why have you taken so much money out of my account? Um, and they're like, oh, well, it's an, apparently it's an automated system and it just keeps trying and trying and trying until it takes the money out. So and God all those knows declines many, have been used against you. Yeah, they oh, have. Oh, wow. Yep. So too many declines from a company that's not... So yep. that's what's happened? You've been rejected for your application yep. based on a company's declines? Exactly. I, I'm yeah. unaware of what bills I have and I'm financially incapable of looking after myself. Yet you've managed to go and get your own financial counsellor, sort your own budgets out, yep. flock off the burden on your budget. <laughs> I, ended up, I ended up getting up to date with everything. Up to date with my, everything. My, my bloody rent was up to date. I was in advance by like a couple of hundred dollars each on my uh, phone bill and my actually in my electricity. I got up to nine hundred dollars in advance. So, so then you, I stopped you've budgeted back and you're still yeah. being denied yeah. exit. Yeah. This but is going to be a hard call, one if I, if, in, because we are in, over time. I just need oh, to. I'm so sorry, Karen. Yeah. Um, this is a hard one, but I will. Uh, I'm going to throw it out there. Are you happy to tell Australia about what's going to happen November 2nd? <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't actually know what's going to happen November 2nd. And up until, well, really, up until just after I had Bob. I'd been avoiding thinking about it altogether because yeah. I didn't want the stress and I wanted You'll to focus on If you don't feel up to talking bumps. and sharing, oh, no, I'm good. Don't. I'm good. I'm good. Um, okay. So basically, um, I've been in the same house for six years. Yeah. Um, my owner is amazing, um, but he wants to renovate the house. So in, yeah. I can't remember when exactly, but he gave me uh, notice that I needed to leave. He gave me way more notice than he needed to. He gave me till the 2nd of November to find a house. Yeah. I have been applying for houses um, since January. Uh, I have over 45 rejections. I stopped counting at 45. Um, apparently, there's nothing wrong with my application. They're just wanting working couples, which doesn't make any sense to me because especially in this environment, they could lose their job tomorrow. Mm. I'm guaranteed income. You know, I'm guaranteed yeah. to pay the rent. Um, I've got excellent rental history, great references. So I'm just not having any luck finding a house. And it's gotten to the point where I've kind of given up. I mean, I'll, I'll apply if something shows, comes up that's, that's suitable, but it's, there's just let, fewer and fewer houses that are coming up. So come November, you know... <sighs> I don't know what's going to happen. Like, I could be homeless with five children. You know, like, I mean, my mum won't let that happen, but <laughs> she has a, a three-bedroom house that is chock-a-block full. My sister and her partner live there. Her and her husband live there, and she's talking about clearing out the garage so that we can stay in the garage or putting up a tent in the backyard. And, like... And this is in Keith Pitt's electorate where there is yep. no social housing left. The budget yep. for the federal budget for state ho for housing and social housing was cut. Yep. Yeah. And now you're and paying the, the real price. Estates, the real estates have this stupid 30% rule. So yeah. basically, um, if, if one week's rent is more than 30% of your entire income, yeah. you're automatically rejected. Yeah. Um, I think that works out to be about $280 a week or something like that. Um, Certainly not a week's rental down here in Melbourne, I can tell you that. No, no. I'm paying $350 a week rent in the house I'm in at the moment and I've been paying Most that people, for six yeah. years. You know, like, and it hasn't been a problem. My rent is, you know, it's automatically come out and even before centre pay, it was the first thing that I paid, you know. Every, every so real day. estate agents are capping you off and not giving you market equity as far as your yep. capacity to pay rent. Out, out of those 45 plus houses that I've applied for, three, three have bothered calling my references. All the others were automatic. No, nah, don't want you. 